if this is a cassava bread, well, why is it that we're just getting to see it? Well, it's over a year. It's a year now. This is July. No, it's, it's in, the, in bread, you don't get to see bread. You taste bread. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you will see that if you actually go to UTC, you will get this there. Uh, they are ramping up production of this. Actually, believe me, it's great bread. Right? This bread costs 60% of the cost of wheat bread. And it tastes better than white flour uh, wheat bread. And you hear quite a lot about the issue of some people will tell you, oh, it can aggravate this and that. That's not correct. I'm a scientist. I know that. This bread is so healthy because the glycemic index of this bread but the argument uh, some people have come up with uh, concerning cassava bread uh, is that uh, well they're allergic to it. Some yeah. say well cassava is not too good for them. Uh, I'm quite sure you're aware of that uh, argument. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, I take a look at you and, and also at her and myself. We all grew up eating cassava, right? And we look great. Everybody looks great, you know. No, it is a misinformation. It's a deliberate misinformation. Here are the facts when it comes to the issue of what can aggravate um, diabetes. There's something called glycemic index. The glycemic index basically is the speed at which sugar enters your body. So the lower that glycemic index, right, the lower the risk that you may have an aggravation of diabetes. But if it's high, obviously the probability of that aggravation is higher. Now here are the facts. Cassava has a glycemic index of 57. White flour, wheat flour, has a glycemic index of 71. White flour with bread from wheat has 75%. So, in fact, this bread combines cassava flour that has a lower glycemic index with white flour from wheat that has a high glycemic index to get a healthier bread. The president of the Nigerian Nutrition Association has come out to debunk such stuff the Medical Association has come up to debunk such stuff. I mean, take a look at it. Nigerians look great. So how can somebody tell the Nigerians that it's what, you know, other countries, the Americans or Canadians and others are selling that actually much healthy? No. You know, our parents live much longer than the current generation. That's because they are eating healthier food. Yam, for example. <coughs> the glycemic index is only 44. So what I want to say is that uh, obviously, there will be those that uh, make money from the current system, mm -hmm. that are rent seekers, that don't want Nigeria to uh, make that substitution. Think about it. If you're the largest producer of something in the world, you ought to be the largest processor of that stuff in the world. So for the farmer mm -hmm. there, maybe, uh, sorry Mark, for the farmer maybe in the village or anywhere, uh, the cassava farmer, how can he benefit uh, from all of this uh, policy? Because we understand that while well, the initiative is meant to infuse an increase in higher percentage of cassava flour into the baking of bread in Nigeria. So the man who is a cassava farmer, and he, before now he believes that well, his product would just be used for gari and maybe some other stashy products. How can he be uh, part of this to the extent that he will feel it and know that there's a difference in its production before this initiative? Well, in fact, the farmers are feeling it. Because when you take a look at cassava farmer today, the cost of harvesting that cassava on the ground far exceeds how much they're going to get from the market. Most of the cassava in Nigeria is underground because there are no markets for it. And so that's why we are creating those markets. Now, already for this, to make this particular bread, we have farmers accelerating the supply of cassava Many of them that couldn't find the markets before are getting markets now. Secondly are the processors, those that process the high quality cassava flour. When Mr. President uh, uh, came on board, we had only in this country uh, two uh, large processors of high quality cassava flour. Both of them were within one month of shutting down to are moving to Ghana. Why? Because under the former president, President Basanjo, and they had the 10% policy, to substitute cassava flour in bread, you know, uh, the, those in the flour milling industry, you know, made sure it didn't work. And I'm not surprised that they did that, you know, because you protect your own rent. That's what people do. But all those SMEs died. 153 of them, I went to each one of them. I came back an angry man because it showed me that the economic rent-seeking behavior of a few decimates the life of the many. 
And so what we've done in the last couple of months is that we've upgraded those 153 SMEs back in business, people that actually did invest their own life saving in that and have some others kill it because they didn't want it to work. That is now up. We have a total capacity of that 110,000 metric tons that they are producing. We are upgrading their flash dryers right now as we speak. We have Thai Farm, which, is, which was within one month of closing when we started. Thai Farm is today operating 24 hours, six days a week, supplying that flour. They're buying that cassava. It's being processed by the processors and going further. But we are even doing more than that. We, as a government, we said we will do 40% substitution for bread and for confectionaries within by 2015. We are well ahead of our target. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> when you say for bread and others, the other confectioners like uh, maybe meat pies and sausages. Yes, actually, yeah, meat pies, you know. So uh, it goes beyond bread? No, it goes beyond bread. It's a whole confectionery. But the man still has to know the market. We have to take his product. To, because we really want it to be felt by the man there who is farming, uh, trying to bring his product. Uh, the man there, how can he get the market, really? Who does he give his products to? Well, you know, the, the, the farmers are selling their cassava to the processors. The processors are making high quality cassava flour and selling, you know, off to those that are the corporate bakers. But Mr. President did something, you know, uh, two days ago, which was phenomenal. You know, the president eats this bread every day. This is great bread. You know, I eat this bread every day. If the president of the country, who can eat anything he wants, right, eats this bread, I must tell you something. I remember he hosted the president of Malawi to dinner once. and. His Excellency was quite generous to ask me to join him at the dinner table. And as the President of Malawi was eating, I asked, I said, how, Your Excellency, how do you like the bread you're eating? You know, looking at me in the startled way, she was like, bread, you're know, asking me about bread, it kind of a look. I said, I'm sure my President would like you to know that is cassava bread that you're eating. She stopped and she said, no, you can't make bread out of cassava. Mr. President said, that's why you are eating it. And immediately she said, I import a lot of wheat in Malawi. How can I learn from Nigeria? They pack the bread, they put it into her limousine, she takes them to Malawi. One week after, they send a letter back. They want to see how Nigeria can help them in Malawi to do that substitution. We're getting the same from Ivory Coast, we're getting the same from Ghana. We're are you, are you bothered about uh, sustainability? How can we sustain this? Because we remember once upon a time an Asian country also came to look at how they can get the oil palm from us, but today I think they are masters at it to the extent that the knife we once had, uh, Institute for Oil Palm Research, Research yes. is just there and uh, we're not even exporting anymore. Well, I think that's what we're trying to change. When the president actually announced those fiscal measures, uh, which the coordinating minister of the economy announced two days ago, you know, those measures is how to take that bread to scale. So you need the master bakers to do that beyond the corporate bakers. We have 435,000 master bakers in the country, each one of them employing about 30 people. So in the new measures that we set, the cost of the enzymes, to make this you need enzymes. And the enzymes are not produced in Nigeria. Because cassava, by nature, it doesn't have gluten, so it doesn't rise. So you need to have some enzymes. Now, Mr. President said the duty on the enzymes, zero. From 10%, knock it off to zero. Second is that the master bakers need new equipment. They need mixers, chillers, rotary ovens. That costs money. Mr. President directed that we create a cassava bread development fund that will fund the master bakers to be able to do that. Now we are also doing something that is structural, which is important for Nigerians to know. It goes beyond the bread that you're seeing. It's about the economy. We are changing the structure, the conduct, and performance of the milling industry the way you know it today. Because today you have five or so large roller mills in the country. It's an oligopoly. What we are doing now is there's a new technology we are going to bring in, which is a modular technology for milling. You can dis you decentralize milling. You get it closer to the master bakers, and you sell premix. The master baker that wants to do this bread needs the flour pre-mix for them with the enzymes in it. So we are creating a new cluster of businesses that are going to be doing pre-mixes for this. What that means is this. 
Nigeria can become, in fact, an exporter of premix cassava flour from cassava bread to other African countries. So we turn what was essentially something rotten on the ground and we create a market for it that we can, in fact, not only satisfy our demand and export. So I want to say that the great thing about this policy of the president is as follows. One, the bread is cheaper. Two, it is that you create jobs, you create markets. You don't export jobs, you create jobs domestically. And that's why I'm also excited <coughs> by the gains we have made over the last several months with the deal with China. We were able to get a financing facility from China at 2% interest rate, 20 year term, and seven years moratorium to be able to acquire 18 large-scale, high-quality cassava processing plants. All those plants, you know, will process about 1.4 million metric tons. Okay, so... So that, that's going to make us the largest processor of this in Africa, if not in the world.